So today we're covering a video from a channel whose name I cannot pronounce because I'm pretty sure it's not family friendly. And I don't really like this guy's channel because his voice is very monotone and boring and it takes him a long time to say anything and to get his point across. But that being said, it's still much easier to watch than some Flat Earth videos, so it'll do. So at the beginning of his video, he says that the silly people who believe that the Earth is more or less spherical, like myself, say that gravity is why water droplets form spheres and why liquids of different densities don't separate in the absence of gravity, or in microgravity, or in free fall, what have you. But really, these compartmentalized experiments and observations do not fit together in the bigger picture of the heliocentric model of a spherical Earth spinning and falling around a massive sun due to gravity. We are taught to believe that the Earth is a sphere of a specific mass compared to something like the Moon or the Sun, which causes this force of gravity to pull everything down towards the centre of the alleged ball Earth at a rate of 9.8 metres per second squared, which is about 195 kilometres an hour or 122 miles per hour regardless of the mass of the object being dropped, as demonstrated in vacuum chambers. Now here, I've noticed a common error that I've seen among Flat Earthers, that being that they don't really understand physics. See, speed is not the same thing as acceleration. Speed is how fast you're going. Velocity is how fast you're going and in what direction. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity, either the change in direction or the change in speed, or both. Meters per second squared isn't just speed with a little more math thrown in. It's acceleration. It's meters per second per second. That's how many meters per second you change every second. That doesn't translate into kilometers an hour or miles an hour. And secondly, I have no idea where he's getting these numbers from. 9.8 meters per second squared is 130,000 kilometers per hour squared, and 9.8 meters per second is 35 kilometers an hour. I've tried many different ways to calculate this wrongly, but I still have no idea how he came to this number. Not that it's all that important anyway. However, this constant rate of acceleration straight down for solid objects of a fixed mass that have already been lifted up in the medium of air can be put down to the fact that the air or a vacuum is less dense than anything else so everything will fall through it at the same rate of speed. It does not have to have anything to do with the mass of the Earth beneath it. Well, how does that work? I mean, really, how does that work? Because the current idea is that within a fluid, being air or water, the fluid on top is weighing down the fluid underneath it. And because of that, there's a difference in pressure. Higher pressure being at the bottom of the fluid, and lower pressure at the top of the fluid. So, if we say there's an object in the middle of this, the fluid underneath it has a higher pressure than that above it, so it's going to push it up because of the difference in pressure. And if the object is less dense than the fluid as a whole, then it will push it all the way to the top. And if not, then it'll either sink to the bottom, or stay somewhere in the middle, where it's about equal. But notice that this buoyancy force only actually pushes things upwards. It never pulls things downward. Gravity does that. Buoyancy can't. If an object is more dense than the fluid that it's within, then having higher pressure here and lower pressure here is not going to push it down. It's not. Something else is pulling it down. And we know that it's not buoyancy because buoyancy requires gravity. That difference in pressure is because the fluid on top is weighing down the fluid underneath it. That's because of gravity. 
buoyancy cannot replace gravity because it requires gravity. This idea does not hold up if your understanding of buoyancy goes beyond, oh, lighter things float, heavy things sink. And gravity also explains the direction that objects fall. I mean, from the perspective of an object, why would any direction be considered down? In order for buoyancy to work, you need that difference, that sort of gradient of pressure from a column of fluid, and that's not explained by flat earthers. And it has never ever been scientifically proven that down is towards the center of the ball earth in all directions, rather than just straight down through the medium in which the object is dropped. Well, what makes any direction down through the medium? I mean, if it's not affected by the ground underneath it, then how is towards the ground favored above away from the ground, or any other direction? The answer, of course, is that difference in pressure which is caused by gravity. So, keeping in mind that liquids will not settle in layers of density when they are in free fall at a speed downwards of 195 kilometers an hour or 122 miles per hour. Well, let's compare that with the globe Earth's alleged orbital speed or free fall around the Sun, which is said to be 30 kilometers a second or 108,000 kilometers an hour or 70,000 miles per hour. Well, remember that speed isn't as important as acceleration. See, because speed is relative to your reference point, traveling at a constant 30 kilometers a second is no different from standing completely still. See, if you're on a train that's traveling at 100 kilometers an hour, or 60 miles per hour, as long as the path is straight and smooth, you can walk up and down and around within the train, no problem, but if that train slams on its brakes, you're definitely going to feel it, and when it takes off again, you're going to feel that change in motion too. Because what you feel is that change in motion, not the motion itself. And that's because objects won't start or stop moving, which is to say accelerate, unless there's a force applied. So when there's force, then there's acceleration, then there's difference in air and water pressure, and then there's the feeling that you're moving. Yes, we're moving pretty fast around the sun, but speed alone doesn't really affect us. But granted, we are accelerating as the Earth orbits the Sun, since we're constantly changing the direction that we're traveling. But since the Earth is so far away from the Sun, that acceleration is only about 0 0.006 meters per second squared, which is a rate of acceleration, not speed. And that amount of acceleration is about six ten thousandths of the acceleration we experience when falling due to Earth's gravity. That's negligible. This assumption, based on calculations made to fit the heliocentric model rather than actual measurements which have never ever been made, would mean that the Earth itself is falling at a rate many times greater than the rate of acceleration downwards required to make liquids not settle. This would logically conclude that if the Earth was in free fall around the Sun, liquids on the Earth would never, ever settle. Because the Earth is said to be falling at a rate of acceleration greater than that of gravity. Again, there's a difference between speed and acceleration, and the acceleration of the Earth around the Sun is negligible. But I want to point out what's going on here. See, he's using flawed logic and arguments to sort of paint a picture that the model that normal people use is flawed and unreasonable. The reality is that our real model actually has proof and explanations, but the Flat Earth model, not so much. But that's pretty much how Flat Earth arguments go, mistakenly thinking that they've somehow poked holes in the idea that Earth is a planet, and then scrambling to find an explanation of certain phenomena without it. The reality is that our current model of the Earth and Universe does actually make sense when you truly understand it. 
and primitive models are just that. And well, that's it for that video. And these next points that I'm going to make could very well have been made by showing you images like this, but that's no fun. See, there's a fairly recent trend in the Flat Earth community to make songs about the conspiracy. So here's one of those. He said, that's the famous blue marble that everybody's seen. We've seen this photo a thousand times upon our TV screen. But let me tell you something about that famous shot. It's not a photo at all, man. It was made in Photoshop cause there ain't no photographs about somebody tell me why. He said, look up Robert Simmon. He made that cartoon ball. He's the guy you should research. He works for NASA and all. He openly admits that it's all just artistry. He said, and I quote, it's photoshopped, but it has to be. There ain't no photographs about somebody tell me. So the blue marble picture of Earth was a fake. Well, the second one, at least. The one that you're talking about, the one made by Robert Simmon, was indeed faked. That is, it's not an actual photograph of the Earth from space, but instead it uses lots of images taken from a satellite in low Earth orbit, which can't see much of the Earth at one time. It stitches them together and projects them in 3D. And then it was further modified to cover up the gaps between these satellite images to correct for colors, etc. It has to be photoshopped because it's not actually a photo in and of itself, but instead it's a reconstruction. And even actual photographs from space, which we do have, are altered because taking images from space is fairly complicated and some of the features that we would like to see or highlight aren't clearly visible, among other reasons. This quote is taken out of context and cherry-picked. They took this one quote, it's photoshopped but it has to be, and took it out of the context in which Robert Simmons explained the image, explained how he made the image and what the image actually is. They took this one little phrase from what seems to be an actually fairly obscure interview and say, oh, it has to be photoshopped. That must mean everything's fake. No. Now, that being said, the image in question isn't the only blue marble. This here was the first image to be called the Blue Marble. This one actually is a photograph taken from the Apollo 17 mission and not photoshopped. Well, as far as I can tell. If it is, it's just for the color and the fact that it was originally taken like this. Yep, every photo of the Earth is artist trickery. All the photos on Google Man are as fake as fake can be. Right, one picture is fabricated, so they all are. Got it. Download all the photos and put them side by side. Compare all the continents, they're each a different size. Compare all the colors, each globe a different shade. If all of these were photos, man, they should look the goddamn same. The further away you are from a sphere, the more you can see of its surface. And the closer you are to a certain area, the bigger it seems to be. It's perspective. Pictures taken from different distances away from the Earth look different. And different cameras reproduce color differently. Although the differences in color is probably due more to how it was edited afterwards, which is common practice in order to highlight certain features like the difference between water and land, or to make it sort of more true to life. And yes, there are pictures of the Earth that aren't actually taken from space, but instead reconstructed. But they were never intended to mislead the public. It was meant to be just an image of Earth to show what the Earth looks like. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Join me next week where I'll learn homeopathy in my sleep. Maybe. Probably not. I'll think of something.